everyone, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and I'm Erica. And today with Erica, we have an upper intermediate lesson. That's right, an upper intermediate lesson that's a little bit strange. It's a little bit strange, but it's a real English lesson because that's what we give you here at English Pod. So in today's lesson, we've got a lot of really great language for you. We've got language to help you to gossip better. Gossip. Why don't you、uh, explain it a little bit, just in case? Okay. So if I Gossip. I maybe share news or information about other people with my friends. Like I might say something like, "Marco, did you see what happened in Chinese Pod today? You'll <laughs> never guess what I saw." <laughs> exactly. That's gossip. And we also have language today to describe things. To describe strange things. Strange things. All right. So let's take a look at our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. So in our vocabulary preview, we'll look at a few important words that will help you to understand the dialogue a little bit better. Exactly, and the first word is weird. 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 Now this is a common word you probably hear all the time and in a lot of different situations. So we wanted to explain it today. Yeah,、uh, this word just means strange. It's strange. Yeah, weird person is a strange person. Exactly. But the thing about this word is, if you are a young person, let's say under the age of thirty-five, you'll probably use it about a hundred times a day. <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a good sounding word. Weird. It is. Okay, but the thing is that even though it's probably more commonly used in American English, it's still widely used for British English as well. Yeah, that's true. So, but maybe in British English you would say something like odd. It's odd. Yeah, that's more common. Okay, let's look at our second word: housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Now this is a cultural thing. It's really common in North America to give a housewarming gift to someone. Yeah, if I move into a new house, maybe some of my friends or family will bring a gift over to. Make my house a little bit more beautiful. So something like a photo frame, or or maybe a plant, or sometimes even like maybe a basket of pastries or something.、Oh, okay.、Well, yeah. I've never gotten one of those because、really? I don't have a home. Oh, <laughs> where do you live? On the street? <laughs> well, I don't have a、uh, my own home, so I have never gotten one of those. Okay. Okay, so we're ready now to listen to our dialogue. So we've got two housewives who are gossiping about what's going on in the neighborhood, and let's listen to what happens. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway, and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see? Why would he? Hello, ladies. <gasps> Armand.、Oh, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like to have you both for dinner. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to have you both over for dinner. Ooh, that guy seems kind of weird. <laughs> you can hear his voice is like a weird guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our language takeaway and look at some of these great words. Language takeaway. So our language takeaway focuses on several words from the dialogue that we feel are really important for you to know. Exactly, and we have four of them for you today. Why don't we look at the first one? Okay, so the first word is a bad feeling. Bad feeling. A bad feeling. A bad feeling. So we've got a few examples that will help you to understand how this phrase works. Example one. I don't like Kelly's new boyfriend. I've got a bad feeling about him. 
Example two. It's so dark. We shouldn't be out here. I've got a bad feeling about this. Example three. I've got a bad feeling about this trip. I feel like something is going to happen. Maybe we shouldn't go. Okay, so basically, you think something bad is gonna happen. Yeah, you have a sort of uncomfortable feeling. Okay, that makes sense. I have a bad feeling about something. Exactly. Okay, let's look at our second word now. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. So when someone kicks you out, it's they force you to leave. You don't want to leave, but they force you to. Yeah, leave. Marco, have you ever kicked someone out of your class? Um, yes, I have. I really? Th- yeah. If you misbehave in my class, you're kicked out. So you're pretty strict, huh? <laughs> well, sometimes I am. Okay. Um, okay. Also, maybe you've kicked your husband out of bed. Mm, I might have done that <laughs> once or twice before. <laughs> we'll have to ask him. I'm sure he has. <laughs> All right. So that's what it means. You force someone to leave the house, leave the class, leave the bed. So kicked out of class, kicked out of the house, kicked out of bed. Exactly. Great. Let's look at our third word now. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Now this is a really common phrase. I like this phrase a lot, and we've got some examples for you to listen to to help you understand this word a little bit better. Example one. Shh! Did you hear that? Oh, I think I saw something. Stop it! You're really creeping me out. Example two. This place really creeps me out. Let's get out of here. All right. Well, I have a confession to make. I'm kind of creeped out by clowns. You are. Yes. I don't know. They're just creepy. They're they scare me. I don't really? Yes. Yeah, so what is it about clowns that scare you so much? I don't know. They're just white faces and weird paint. I don't know. It's just creepy. And the way they laugh. Oh, I don't know. No. Maybe you had a bad experience with clowns <laughs> as a child. Probably. I watched the scary movie about clowns or something. Yeah. All right. So creeped me out basically means made me feel uncomfortable. Yes. It scares you. Yeah. Well, speaking of being scared, we have our final word for language takeaway, and it is scared the heck out of me. You scared the heck out of me. Scared the heck out of me. You got really scared. Yeah, I think this is a quite common way of saying you really, really scared me. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to listen to our dialogue again. Now, try and see if you can catch all these phrases that we just talked about. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway, and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see, why would he? Hello, ladies. Ah, Armand, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you are not doing anything tonight. I would like to have you both for dinner. I mean, I would like to have you both over for dinner. You know, one of the things I really like about this dialogue is there's a lot of great phrases that will help you to gossip. 
That's a good observation. So I think it's time for Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. In Fluency Builder, we take a simple phrase or a simple word you already know and show you how to express the same idea a little bit more naturally. Okay, great. So let's take a look at our first item for Fluency Builder. So when you gossip with somebody, you often tell them news or information that they don't know already. And you might start by saying, did you know that? Or you can say, did you hear? Yeah, both of those phrases are perfectly fine. But if you want to sound a little bit more native-like when you're gossiping, you might try out this phrase from the dialogue. I don't know if you've heard. I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, that's a really good phrase. You're saying exactly the same thing, but in a really natural way. It's a great one for gossiping. So, Marco, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but Chinese pod is up to some pretty crazy things. <laughs> See, that's exactly how you would use that phrase. So now let's take a look at our second item. Now, when you're gossiping, you want information. That's right. So you might say, oh, tell me about it. Or something like, give me the details. Yeah, and again, both of these examples are perfectly fine, but when you're gossiping, you might want to try something like this. You have to fill me in. You have to fill me in. Fill me in. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Fill me in. You know, give me the details. Fill me in. Fill me in on today's gossip. Okay, so let's take a look at our third item. Now, if you have some juicy, gossipy news... And you want to start up a conversation, you might use this phrase here. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. That's a really good phrase. You can change it a little bit. You can say, you'll never guess who I saw. Or you'll never guess what I heard. Exactly. Very and excellent gossip phrases. <laughs> We're teaching you how to gossip because that's real English. People really do it, so you got to know the language for it. <laughs> All right, so enough of our gossip. I think it's time for us to listen to the dialogue one last time. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see? Why would he... Hello, ladies. <gasps> Armand! Oh, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like to have you both for dinner. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to have you both over for dinner. Okay, Marco, I have a true story for you. Is it kind of like a creepy story? It is a creepy story indeed. Is it a true story? No, it's really true. Okay. So when I was young, I used to live in the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the country, all of the neighbors know each other. It's a small community, so everyone knows what's happening all the time. Okay. And there was some gossip going on in our community about a guy who lived at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And he was the owner of a car wrecking yard. So a place where you take old broken down cars and take the parts apart to sell. Right. And anyway, a scrapyard. Yeah, a scrapyard. All right. Okay, so, you know, he had a wife and a couple of kids, um, and suddenly his wife disappeared. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and no one knew what happened or anything. And so several years pass, and suddenly the police start coming in and start investigating this guy and start digging up all of the land around his property. And I guess, I don't know what they're doing, but I think they were looking for the wife's body. Wow. And did they find it? I don't know. I moved away. 
Ah, oh, such a great story, but we don't know how it ends. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> well, we can leave it up to the imagination of our listeners. Exactly. Maybe they were looking for an old car. An old car buried in the ground. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. That's a true story. Real English, real stories. You, you heard go. it first here on English Pod. <laughs> All right. So we want to hear your comments and suggestions about this topic. I bet a lot of our listeners also have creepy stories, maybe ghost stories, maybe, I don't know, different types of、uh, weird stories. So you guys should definitely log on to English Pod and share them with us. That's right. Go to EnglishPod.com and in the comments section of the web, Website, tell us your creepy stories. And we're going to pick out the best story as the story of the week. We'll、uh, announce it in our This Just In podcast. Yes, so we want to hear all your juicy stories and gossip, maybe as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's time for us to go. So be sure to listen to us next time. But until then, it's bye bye. Bye. <laughs> The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Phrase used to introduce a piece of information. I don't know if you heard. Tell me about it. Fill me in. A sense or feeling that something bad is going to happen. A bad feeling. Strange, unusual. Weird. Make or force someone to leave when they don't want to. Kick out. Make me feel uncomfortable and a bit scared. Creep me out. Phrase used to introduce a piece of news. You'll never guess. Cause someone to feel a lot of fear. Scare the heck out of me. Strange or unusual. Bizarre. Strange or scary. Causing people to feel nervous and afraid. Creepy. A dead person who drinks the blood of living people. Vampire. Phrase used to introduce a piece of gossip. Have you heard? Phrase used to introduce an interesting or surprising piece of information. Guess what? Let's try that faster. A dead person who drinks the blood of living people. Vampire. Phrase used to introduce a piece of news. You'll never guess. Tell me about it. Fill me in. Phrase used to introduce a piece of gossip. Have you heard? Strange or scary, causing people to feel nervous and afraid. Creepy. Phrase used to introduce an interesting or surprising piece of information. Guess what? Strange, unusual. Weird. Make me feel uncomfortable and a bit scared. Creep me out. Cause someone to feel a lot of fear. Scare the heck out of me. Make or force someone to leave when they don't want to. Kick out. A sense or feeling that something bad is going to happen. A bad feeling. Strange or unusual. Bizarre. Phrase used to introduce a piece of information. I don't know if you heard.
Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Weird. Last night, I kept hearing a really weird sound. I don't know what it was. Weird. Our teacher seems a bit weird, don't you think? Weird. The weirdest thing happened to me yesterday. A pack of monkeys stole my car keys. A bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling about Kelly's new boyfriend. I don't think he's a good guy. A bad feeling. I have a bad feeling about this sales strategy. I think it's going to fail. A bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling about this trip. I think we should stay home. Kick out. If you don't be quiet, I'm going to kick you out of this meeting. Kick out. We got kicked out of the restaurant at midnight because they were closing. Kick out. That's it. I'm kicking you out of class. Go stand in the hall. Creep me out. This old house is so scary. It's really creeping me out. Creep me out. I watched The Exorcist last night. That movie really creeps me out. Creep me out. The last time I walked home alone at night, I really got creeped out. I almost got in a car accident yesterday. That scared the heck out of me. Don't wear that vampire mask. You're scaring the heck out of the baby. I'm terrified of clowns. They scare the heck out of me. I don't know if you've heard, but Susan and John are breaking up. I don't know if you've heard, but the new marketing manager is single. I don't know if you've heard, but Maurice quit his job yesterday. Fill me in. I can't go to today's meeting, but can you fill me in on the important details? Fill me in. How was your date? You have to fill me in. Fill me in. Sarah missed her class yesterday, but I filled her in on the homework assignment. You'll never guess what I heard. Peter and Anna are getting married. You'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Bill, my boyfriend from high school. You'll never guess what Sandra told me. She's moving to Alaska. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Erica. And today we have a great intermediate lesson for you. 
That's right. We've got some excellent real English for you all about cleaning the house. Cleaning the house. That's a real life situation. So we're going to give you real English. Exactly. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at language about cleaning the house. We're also going to learn a few phrases that you can use if you want to ask someone for help. And maybe if you're a little bit lazy like me, a phrase or two to avoid doing work. Okay, well, let's get started then with our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right, great. We have two great words for you today. Erica, why don't you tell us the first one? The first word is such a mess. Such a mess. Such a mess. So when something is a mess, it's dirty. Yeah, or things are everywhere. Disorganized. Yeah, so you know, you have your clothes on the floor and your shoes on. Okay, so that sounds a lot like my desk at work. <laughs> your shoes on your desk. Yeah, I've seen that. I've been wanting to ask you about <laughs>、yeah. that. Okay, such a mess. Really, really dirty. Okay, now let's take a look at our second word chores. 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 Chores is a really common word for things you have to do around the house. Like for example, laundry, or making the bed, or when you have to take out the garbage. Those are all examples of chores. Chores, yeah. I guess everyone can remember when they were kids, they had chores to do. Yeah, when I was a kid, it was my chore to chop wood. Chop wood. Yeah. That's a great chore. <laughs> Playing with an axe. <laughs> Maybe if you're a boy, but for a girl, <laughs>、yeah. it was not so great. Ah, that's why you're so strong and、yeah. fit. <laughs> All right, so let's listen to our dialogue for the first time. It's gonna be kind of fast, but don't worry if you miss something because we'll explain all of the important language afterwards. Honey, the house is such a mess. I need you to help me tidy up a bit. My boss and her husband are coming over for dinner, and the house needs to be spotless. I'm in the middle of something right now. I'll be there in a second. This can't wait. I need your help now. All right, all right. I'm I'm coming. Okay. Here's a list of chores we need to get done. I'll do the dishes and get all the groceries for tonight. You can sweep and mop the floors. Oh, and the furniture needs to be dusted. You know what? I have to pick something up in the mall. So why don't you clean the floors and I'll go to the supermarket and get all the groceries? Sure, that's fine. Here's the list of all the things you need to get. Don't forget anything. And can you pick up a bottle of wine on your way home? Hey, honey, I'm back. Wow, the house looks really good. Great. Can you set the table? Just a sec. I'm just gonna vacuum this rug real fast. Wait! Don't turn it on. Oh my God, Marco! What happened there? An explosion. <laughs> We love a good explosion here at English.、Pod. We're going to give you as many explosions as possible. <laughs> okay.、Right. So let's take a look at our language takeaway. Language takeaway. So language takeaway is the part of our lesson where we teach you what we think are some really important words that are found in the dialogue. Exactly, and we have three really important words in our dialogue today. So let's start with the first one: tidy up. Tidy up. Tidy up. So to tidy up means to put things in their correct spot. Right. So put the shoes on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Take Get those、off. shoes off my desk. Exactly. So tidy up, organize things a little bit. Yeah. Put things away. Okay. Let's take a look at our second word now. Spotless. 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 So when you want something to be spotless, you want it to be really clean. Really clean, not a spot of dirt on it. Like your desk. Exactly, my desk is spotless. My desk is not spotless. <laughs> All right, great word. Now let's take a look at our last word for language takeaway: mall. 
Mall. Mall. M A L L. Mall. Mall. Yeah, it's a strange sounding word. It is a little bit funny sounding, but it basically means a large building with many shops inside, many different stores inside. Right now, in British English, you would say shopping center. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more common, but in American English, we say mall. mall. Great. So now it's time in our show to look at putting it together. Putting it together. Okay, so in putting it together, we take a word from the dialogue and we show you how to use this word in real English. So we give you a couple of examples of how this particular word can be used. Exactly. So the word that we have for today is groceries. 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 Erica, why don't you tell us what groceries are all about? So groceries are all of the food items that you need to buy at the supermarket. So like your bread and milk and meat and vegetables. Exactly. Those all are all stuff. groceries. Okay. So let's listen to some examples on how we use this phrase. Example one. There's no milk. Can you go to the grocery store? Example two. Here's the grocery list. I need all of these things so that I can cook dinner tonight. Don't forget anything. Example three. I hate grocery shopping. I can never find what I'm looking for. Okay, great examples. We heard some really interesting combinations, right? Yeah, we heard grocery store, which is where you buy your groceries. Exactly. Grocery shopping, buying all your groceries, <laughs> <laughs> and grocery list,、um, where you have all the items that you need to buy. A list of everything you need to buy. Exactly. You know, grocery store. I think this is quite a common word in Canada. Probably North America. Yeah. Do you say grocery store in America? Well, if it's a small one. Really? So like it, a small store. In Canada, I say grocery store for even like a supermarket. Really? Yeah. I guess. Well, I would say supermarket for a large one and grocery store for a little corner shop. All of these little differences in American <laughs> Canadian English. Okay, I think it's time for us to listen to our dialogue another time. This time it'll be a little bit slower. Honey. The house is such a mess. I need you to help me tidy up a bit. My boss and her husband are coming over for dinner, and the house needs to be spotless. I'm in the middle of something right now. I'll be there in a second. This can't wait. I need your help now. All right, all right. I'm coming. Okay. Here's a list of chores we need to get done. I'll do the dishes and get all the groceries for tonight. You can sweep and mop the floors. Oh, and the furniture needs to be dusted. You know what? I have to pick something up at the mall. So why don't you clean the floors and I'll go to the supermarket and get all the groceries? Sure, that's fine. Here is the list of all the things you need to get. Don't forget anything. And can you pick up a bottle of wine on your way home? Hey, honey, I'm back. Wow, the house looks really good. Great. Can you set the table? Just a sec. I'm just gonna vacuum this rug real fast. Wait! Don't turn it on. Okay, great stuff. Love hearing that explosion. That vacuum just is a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> in this dialogue, there was some really interesting language that you can use if you don't want to do any chores in the house. Exactly. So it's time now for fluency builder. Fluency builder. You know, fluency builder is a part of our show that we use to take a common phrase or a word that you already know. And show you how to express that idea more fluently and more naturally. Exactly. So let's take a look at our first idea that we want to explain. 
let's say you're watching TV like the woman in this dialogue and your husband wants you to help him do the chores and you say, no, I'm busy. Right. Or I'm doing something. Those are two great expressions, but we heard something a little bit different in the dialogue. I'm in the middle of something right now. I'm in the middle of something right now. Yeah, that phrase is great. It means she's busy. She's doing something. Yeah, I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. And so, Marco, you can tell us about our next phrase. Okay, well, now suppose that you want to say, you'll be there soon. You might say, I'll be there soon, or... I'm coming. Exactly. But in our dialogue, we heard something a little bit different. Let's listen. I'll be there in a second. I'll be there in a second. So this is a more natural way of saying, I'll be there very soon. Yeah, you know what? I think I use this phrase almost every day. I'll be there in a second. Yeah, yeah. It's really common. Yeah, it means I'll be there really fast. Yes. Okay, so our final item today in Fluency Builder um, is a great phrase that helps you say the idea, could you or would you. Right. Or can you? Yeah. So can you sweep the floor? Could you sweep the floor? But in the dialogue, we heard something that's a little bit different. Why don't you clean the floors and I'll go to the supermarket? Why don't you clean the floors and I'll go to the supermarket? Great. So this is more natural and it's giving a suggestion. Yeah, it's sort of a polite way of asking someone to clean the floors. Right. It's a really good and polite way of saying it. Yeah, I would agree on that. This was Fluency Builder. Now we are ready to listen to our dialogue again at its normal speed. And this time you'll understand a lot better. Honey! The house is such a mess. I need you to help me tidy up a bit. My boss and her husband are coming over for dinner and the house needs to be spotless. I'm in the middle of something right now. I'll be there in a second. This can't wait. I need your help now. All right, all right. I'm, I'm coming. Okay, here's a list of chores we need to get done. I'll do the dishes and get all the groceries for tonight. You can sweep and mop the floors. Oh, and the furniture needs to be dusted. You know what? I have to pick something up in the mall, so why don't you clean the floors and I'll go to the supermarket and get all the groceries. Sure, that's fine. Here's the list of all the things you need to get. Don't forget anything. And can you pick up a bottle of wine on your way home? Hey honey, I'm back. Wow, the house looks really good. Great. Can you set the table? Just a sec. I'm just going to vacuum this rug real fast. Wait, don't turn it on! Um, has, has this ever happened to you? Has your vacuum cleaner exploded in your house? Well, not a big explosion like this one. Not so dramatically. Yeah, not so dramatically. But... It, I've had this happen to me before, yeah. And dust everywhere, and it's just, it's a mess. You don't want to have... You know, this word vacuum um, is really a very American word. Yeah, vacuum. Vacuum the rug, vacuum the carpet. Yeah, vacuum cleaner. In the UK, what did they say? Hoover. Hoover. Yeah, Hoover. Hoover the rug. Hoover the rug. Which is interesting because it's actually a brand. Yeah. So... I guess it's kind of like American English, you say, pass me a Kleenex. Oh, that's true. That would be like a tissue. Yeah. So I guess they say Hoover the rug or Hoover the house. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, I really love these small differences in meaning that we have between American English and British English. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun. Okay. Well, another interesting thing about this is that the man was doing the housework. I know. He's a house husband. Yeah. So he's <laughs> the one doing all the chores in the house. Yeah, that's... Well, that's the new trend now. Now it's more popular for men to stay home and take care of the babies and clean the house. Yeah, like when I was growing up, my dad would take out the garbage 
And that was it. <laughs> My mom had to do everything else. But now I think it's becoming a lot more common, in, especially in North America, for the household chores to be divided between the man and the wife equally. Yeah, I think it's fair. It's Me fair. too. Yeah. yeah. You'd make a good husband, Marco. <laughs> That's what they say, but they haven't married me yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're out of time, folks. Be sure to log on to our community website and you can leave all your comments. And maybe other house husbands out there can give us their feedback on what they think about this. Yeah, so check us out at EnglishPod.com. And thanks for listening today, everyone. Until next time, this is Marco and Erica saying... Bye. Goodbye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Very dirty, disordered. Such a mess. Put things in place. Organize. Tidy up. Perfectly clean. Spotless. Busy doing something at the moment. In the middle of something. Common house tasks. Chores. Food that you buy at a store. Groceries. Careful, thorough house cleaning usually done in the spring. Perfectly clean, having no dirt at all. Immaculate. Wash the dirty clothes. Do the laundry. Soap used to wash plates, knives, forks, bowls, etc. Dish detergent. Garbage. American English. Trash. Garbage, British English. Rubbish. Let's try that faster. Perfectly clean. Spotless. Careful, thorough house cleaning usually done in the spring. Put things in place. Organize. Tidy up. Garbage, British English. Rubbish. Common house tasks. Chores. Soap used to wash plates, knives, forks, bowls, etc. Dish detergent. Perfectly clean, having no dirt at all. Immaculate. Garbage, American English. Trash. Wash the dirty clothes. Do the laundry. Very dirty, disordered. Such a mess. Food that you buy at a store. Groceries. Busy doing something at the moment. In the middle of something. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Such a mess. Your room is such a mess. You need to clean it. Such a mess. The garage is such a mess. I can't find anything in here. Such a mess. When you cook, you always make such a mess. Tidy up. I want to tidy up my closet today because my clothes are all over the floor. Tidy up. Since I cooked dinner tonight, you can tidy up the kitchen. Tidy up.
If you want to go outside and play, you need to tidy up your room. Tidy up. Every morning, I tidy up my room before leaving for work. Spotless. I spent all morning cleaning my car, so now it's spotless. Spotless. You did a great job cleaning the kitchen. It's spotless. Spotless. We need to make sure that the house is spotless before the guests arrive. In the middle of something. I'm in the middle of something right now, so I'll call you back in 10 minutes. In the middle of something. I can't go to lunch now. I'm in the middle of something really important. In the middle of something. I hate it when people interrupt me when I'm in the middle of something. Chores. When I was younger, I used to help my mother with the daily chores. Chores. I wish I could go with you guys, but I have to finish my chores. Chores. I hate doing chores, especially washing the dishes. Groceries. We need to go buy some groceries for this week. Groceries. I forgot the grocery list at home, but don't worry. I remember everything that was on it. Groceries. Don't forget to buy some milk from the grocery store on your way home. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're going to be taking you to the airport. That's right. We're going to listen as a man、um, checks in at the airport and、uh, deals with his luggage. That's right. So, we're going to be looking at a lot of great stuff that can help you the next time you are at the airport at the check in counter. So, why don't we take a look at one word that we're going to preview today in vocabulary preview? Vocabulary preview. We're going to hear this guy say, I'd like to check three pieces. He's going to check three pieces of what? Pieces of luggage. So, when we talk about luggage, we can say pieces of luggage. That's right. Luggage is a non count noun. So, you can't say one luggage, two luggages, three luggages. That's wrong. Right. So, we use pieces of luggage. Okay. So, three pieces of luggage.、Mm-hmm. Very good. Let's listen to our dialogue for the first time. We're going to see what happens with this guy at the airport and with his pieces of luggage. Next, please. Hello, sir. May I see your passport, please? Yes.、Uh, here you go. Will you be checking any bags today? Yes. I'd like to check three pieces. I'm sorry, sir. Airline policy only allows two pieces of check luggage at 20 kilograms each plus one piece of carry on luggage. I will have to charge you extra for the additional suitcase. What? Why? I'm taking an intercontinental flight. I'm flying 16,000 kilometers. How am I supposed to take only two 20 kilo bags? That's absurd. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. You cannot board the flight with that large bag either. Carry on bags must fit in the overhead compartment or under your seat. That bag is clearly too big. Now I see. You charge next to nothing for an international ticket. When it comes to charging for any other small thing, you charge an arm and a leg. So tell me, miss, how much will I have to pay for all of this? Let's see. $625 US dollars. That's more than my round trip ticket!
All right. Well, that's a whole lot of money, isn't it? Well, I think it's a very common situation. I'm sure many of our listeners can relate to this situation. Overweight charges are pretty expensive. Very high. I know from personal experience. <laughs> but that's not what we want to talk about now. We want to talk about some really useful vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, on language takeaway today, we have five words. So why don't we start with the first one? So the woman asked, Will you be checking any bags today? Will you be checking any bags today? To check bags. Right, so the verb to check. It means to,、uh, to give your bags to the airline, to register them. Okay, so that's what happens with your luggage. You check them, so basically they become responsible for your bags. Right. It reminds me of checking into a hotel. Right, very similar. When you go to a hotel, you register at the hotel, you check in. In this case, you just check your luggage. You don't check in your luggage. Right. Okay, so check luggage. So he wanted to check three pieces of luggage, and he also had carry on luggage. Carry on luggage. Carry on. So, carry on luggage, it's pretty simple. That's right, you carry it on yourself. Exactly, you carry it on to the plane. Now,、okay. we, can, we can talk about carry on luggage, right?、Mm -hmm. Or carry on bag. Right, or a carry on suitcase.、Mm -hmm. A very small suitcase that can fit under your seat. Exactly. All right, so carry on luggage. Now, he was traveling on an intercontinental flight. Intercontinental. Intercontinental. We have two words there inter. Between. Between, right? And continental. So this sounds like continent. Okay, so he's traveling maybe from Asia、mm -hmm. to North America. Okay, intercontinental. He's trying to board this intercontinental flight. So to board a flight, board a plane. Board a train. All right, so basically it means to to get on. To get on. To get on a vehicle. Okay, so I can say board the ship,、mm -hmm. board the car. No. No? No. But board the, board the train. Board the train. Board the bus. All aboard. <laughs> that's right. That's why in movies you see that somebody will yell all aboard. Yeah. In the train station, right? Exactly. All aboard. Okay, so board a vehicle. And our last phrase for today overhead compartment. Overhead compartment. Overhead compartment. All right, let's break this phrase down.、Um, overhead. So that's on top of your head, right? Exactly. Yeah. Above you. Yeah. And the compartment is、um, a place where you can put something and store it,、mm -hmm. kind of like a box. Right. Yeah. So you have an overhead compartment, that big box. Where you put your bags and your purse or whatever on an airplane.、Mm -hmm. Very similar to, for example, an overhead projector. Right, so that's the machine that、uh, puts an image or a picture on a wall. Like sometimes you see them in meetings. Right, so because the image is over your head and it's、yep. big, it's called an overhead projector. Okay, so some great language. Why don't we hear it again in context by listening to the dialogue for the second time? Next, please. Hello, sir. May I see your passport, please? Yes, here you go. Will you be checking any bags today? Yes, I'd like to check three pieces. I'm sorry, sir. Airline policy allows only two pieces of checked luggage at 20 kilograms each, plus one piece of carry on luggage. I will have to charge you extra for the additional suitcase. What? Why? I'm taking an intercontinental flight. I'm flying 16,000 kilometers. How am I supposed to take only two 20 kilo bags? That's absurd. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. You cannot board the flight with that large bag either. Carry on bags must fit in the overhead compartment or under your seat. That bag is clearly too big. Now I see. You charge next to nothing for an international ticket. But when it comes to charging for any other small thing, you charge an arm and a leg. So tell me, miss, how much will I have to pay for all this? Let's see. 625 US dollars. That's more than my round trip ticket. 
All right, so I think it's a little bit more clear now. And with this, it's time for us to take a look at some great phrases in putting it together. Putting it together. So this guy was pretty angry about、uh, this airline policy, and he said, "How am I supposed to? How am I supposed to? How am I supposed to?" Okay, so before we get into explaining this, why don't we listen to a couple of examples so we can try and understand what it means? Example one: How am I supposed to fit the dog in the car? There are ten people in there already. Example two: How is she supposed to get to work if her car's in the shop? Example three. How are we supposed to know the answer to that? It's impossible. Okay, so I can understand that it means how can I do this? Right. How do you expect me to do this? How is it possible for me to do this? Very good. It's a phrase you use when you're frustrated, right? Yeah, exactly. You're maybe a little bit frustrated, or you're maybe nervous of, of something that you can't do or don't know how. Yeah, this phrase—it's not impolite, but it sort of gives the idea that you're challenging the other person a little bit. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay, so a good phrase that you can use on, in different situations, and you can try and mix it up with different verbs, right? Right. All right. Now let's take a look at our next phrase. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. 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 So basically, the woman can't help the man, even though he's insisting and he's pushing that he wants another solution. Yep. Right. So finally, she says, "I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do." So we use this phrase、um, when someone's pushing you too much, right? Right, and you would use it only in that situation towards、yep. the end because it is a little bit—it's it's strong. It's not in plight, but it's just you're saying, you know what? I'm sorry. There's I can't do anything about it. Now let's move on to our third phrase. You charge next to nothing. Next to nothing. Next to nothing. Next to nothing. All right. So we're talking about charging. We're talking about. Money. Why don't we listen to some examples of what this next to nothing phrase means? Example one. Do you like my new house? It was so cheap that it almost cost next to nothing. Example two. Let's go to Thailand. Tickets cost next to nothing right now. Example three. The real estate agent charged me next to nothing for his commission, so I got a really good deal. So when something costs next to nothing, it's really cheap, it's right? It's really cheap, or、yeah. you consider it to be cheap.、Mm -hmm. And now for our last phrase, it's the complete opposite of next to nothing. Right, charge an arm and a leg. An arm and a leg. An arm and a leg. All right, so this means it's really expensive. It's so expensive, it's like giving your arm and your leg. Right to pay for it. Yeah, very good. So next to nothing, really cheap. An arm and a leg, really expensive. Can we look at the use here?、Um, all right. So in the dialogue, we heard you charge an arm and a leg, but we can also say it costs an arm and a leg. Right, because we are referring to money.、Mm -hmm. Right. All right, so some great phrases here. Now I think it's time we listen to our dialogue one more time. Next, please. Hello, sir. May I see your passport, please? Yes.、Uh, here you go. Will you be checking any bags today? Yes, I'd like to check three pieces. I'm sorry, sir. Airline policy only allows two pieces of check luggage. At twenty kilograms each, plus one piece of carry-on luggage, I will have to charge you extra for the additional suitcase. What? Why? I'm taking an intercontinental flight. I'm flying sixteen thousand kilometers. How am I supposed to take only two twenty-kilo bags? That's absurd. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. You cannot board the flight with that large bag either. Carry-on bags must fit in the overhead compartment or under your seat. That bag is clearly too big. Now I see. You charge next to nothing for an international ticket. But when it comes to charging for any other small thing, you charge an arm and a leg. So tell me, Miss, how much will I have to pay for all of this? Let's see. 
625 U.S. dollars. That's more than my round trip ticket. Okay, so airline policies, luggage, it's always a problem, right? Most of the time, you always end up paying overweight when you travel. Yeah,、um, I know that this happened to me once and it was really expensive. Really? What happened? I was flying on an intercontinental flight from,、mm-hmm. from India back to Europe and、um, I had too many extra bags, but I really needed to bring them. And so it cost me $6,000. $6,000. Yeah. Wow. So my credit card was pretty maxed out after that. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Well, I'm sure many of our users probably suffered. Similar experiences like this, so please come to our website and share it with us at EnglishPod.com. That's right, Marco and I are always around to answer your questions, so please check us out. And thanks for downloading, you guys. Until next time, Bye. goodbye.